Hi, James Green here with Actual Tech Media. You know, storage is really at the foundation of the data center. And as such, data center architects spend quite a bit of time thinking about how we can do storage better and how we can solve some of the problems that we're having with storage today. If you think about the history of storage in the x86 data center, you'll recall that uh, initially we had a bunch of disks in a single server and we kind of had this one-to-one -one mapping of application, one application to one server and a handful of disks to one server. And while that was significantly easier than what we deal with today, uh, it left us with some big challenges. One was scaling up. We can only fit so much capacity in the physical form factor of any given server. So if there was a need to store just loads and loads of data, that was sometimes a challenge. A more prevalent challenge was the other way around. Um, there was too much capacity in a server and no way to redistribute that unused capacity elsewhere. So if you had 80 gigs of storage in a server and only needed 20, there's 60 sitting there being wasted. And so some bright folks decided, let's put all of this storage together in one device and then have all of the servers consume it remotely. And we call that shared storage. So that took care of those problems. We were able to provision just the amount of storage a workload needs, and we were able to scale beyond the physical constraints of any given server. So that was awesome. But as virtualization came onto the scene and became front and center in the data center, we found a couple of other problems. One being, by putting all of this storage in one device, all of a sudden we have a very large fault domain. Whereas in the past, if one server was struggling, Typically, most of the rest of the servers were just fine. They're not impacted by that. Now, all of a sudden, if the shared storage array tips over, everything else in the data center that's connected to it is also struggling. So that's a problem. The other problem we ran into was that there's still, uh, on the front end of that storage array, controllers handling the I.O. operations. And what would happen is we hit the ceiling of the capacity that those controllers could do and have to replace them with bigger ones. And so then we'd have to migrate. And it was kind of a painful, expensive process uh, to bring new, bigger controllers in and replace the old, slower, too small controllers. And so we iterated on that. And there's two things that we're seeing a lot of today that kind of handle these issues. One is scale out storage. And what that means is essentially that instead of adding bigger storage controllers, we just add more storage controllers. So we scale horizontally instead of vertically. Once two controllers are maxed out, let's add two more and go to four. And so that's handling the problem well. Uh, another way that the problem is dealt with is through hyperconvergence. So we're back to the idea of putting some disks in some servers, but then using software to create a sort of logical shared storage array out of all the disks in those servers. And as you add nodes to your hyperconverged platform, you get more controllers, and it scales out very nicely, and that solves some of the problems as well. But one of the areas that's still a big challenge is when we're talking about big data, and we can use Hadoop as kind of the classic big data application uh, when we talk about it, there's some significant challenges in just the scale and the I.O. capacity that serious big data implementations require. And so there's companies out there implementing some really innovative stuff to take care of things that even our scale out and hyperconverged uh, is struggling a little bit to handle. It can be done and it can be done well, but uh, there's room for an even better way. And so I wanna talk real briefly about two of those that I've seen recently. The first one is called Igneous Systems, and Igneous is deploying a storage array that is made up of one drive to one server, and the architecture revolves around putting a CPU and basically a storage controller right next to a drive in what they call their ratio-perfect architecture, where every time you need to add capacity from a storage perspective, uh, you're adding more resources as well from a compute perspective. And so it scales out very cleanly. And then their software allows that to all be constructed logically. 
And it's a really neat thing. I'm going to share a picture of it in the, the blog post that I'm going to do along with this video. But if you recall an interposer board that would say convert SAS to SATA, just plugs in uh, to the back of the drive and then the drive plugs into the, the back plane. Um, it looks just like that, but it's got a little ARM CPU on there and memory and uh, it's a computer, and so every one of these disks has a computer on the back of it, and that means it's network addressable. And every drive can be consumed independently of all the others and you know, mapped differently and pulled from over here and used over here, and it's a really cool architecture. The other one I want to talk about is a company called DriveScale, and they're doing something really interesting in this space as well. They're framing it more from a rack scale perspective, and in a similar way though, they've got all of the drives in the JBODs that are a part of their architecture talking to what they call their drive scale adapter, which does a similar thing. It converts SAS to Ethernet so that the JBODs are network addressable. And uh, in a similar way, drive scale is able to logically provision resources uh, and storage is disaggregated from compute meaning that we can provision a bunch of logical servers that are exactly the right size for our workload. So if we've got a, uh, a very storage capacity heavy workload, we can provision some resources that are lots and lots of storage, very little compute. And then conversely, if we've got a different workload that requires a lot of CPU, we can do that and just very little compute. And this is all taking place at the rack scale. So we've got a bunch of JBODs, the drive scale adapters, and some compute nodes, and we can carve it all up logically. Uh, the fault domain is different in a smaller way than the shared storage array. The uh, capacity can grow very, very large. And so for big data applications especially, um, both Igneous and drive scale are doing really cool stuff. and. Um, I don't mean to lump them together and say that they're the same thing. They're, they're different architectures and both doing unique and cool stuff, but uh, they're both relevant to this space. And I'm going to share a little bit more about them in the blog that goes with this video. So that if this is interesting to you, um, definitely hit the link to the blog and check that out too. Thanks for your time.